For some people who may not know, can you give us a little background on some historical figures from your area? Okay, well let's talk about Bardstown in general. Bardstown, county seat of Nelson County, was settled in 1780 when we were still part of Jefferson County. Uh, it's named for the Bard family. William Bard was an agent of his brother here in Kentucky and he stood on the banks of the Falls of the Ohio and welcomed everybody coming down the river saying, I've got a deal you can't turn down and I'll let you use this land free until the war is over and then you pay me rent every month. So uh, this didn't exactly happen. They came and cleared the land, built their houses and then they used it. Uh, Bard kind of wandered off and uh, then when he came back the town was fairly well developed and they had the town trustees had been selling lots so he kind of stepped back and watched it grow. Uh, we have federal and Georgian architecture here. We have a lot of houses still from the late 1790s, early 1800 period. We have 299 buildings on the National Register of Historic Places here. We, uh, tourism is our number one industry which is not to say that we don't have other industries we're just as proud of, but tourism is one that we uh, are cultivating and are very pleased with. We have my old Kentucky home, which the song that Stephen Foster wrote, which is now our state song, this was the inspiration for that. Uh, it is a federal mansion sitting on the hill outside of Bardstown Plantation. Uh, John Rowan, the owner, builder, was a lawyer and politician, so we've always been connected with Kentucky politics. The um, we have other things here. The first cathedral, West the Allegheny, St. Joseph Cathedral. It's a Catholic cathedral built by Benedict Joseph Flaget, the first bishop. Uh, this was constructed in 1816. Uh, we have old buildings that people like to visit that now house restaurants and shops and things of this sort, as well as uh, uh, just the atmosphere. We have a very historic town that people like to walk around the streets. We were chosen as one of, of the uh, ten nicest places to visit and to live, actually, in the United States by U.S. News and World Report in 1983. So we looked at, kind of took a second look at ourselves and said, yes, they're right. This is a very nice place to live and we have good schools. Um, I would say good um, weather, but today isn't a good day to say good weather. The sun shines bright most of the time unless it rains and then it's uh, liquid sunshine is what we have here at Bardstown today. Um, the other thing about Bardstown I always like to tell, it's a very cooperative community that has a lot of pride in itself, takes care of itself. Uh, we are always looking down the future. We say we, we are a progressive community that looks forward in progress but looks back in preservation. So we believe in preserving our past while working toward our future. Great. Thank you. Franklin, the county seat of Simpson County. Simpson County population, 15,090. Area square miles, 236. Rank, 90. Simpson County is located in the second congressional district. We're in Franklin, Kentucky. The county seat is Simpson and behind us we have the Simpson County Courthouse. With me we have some lovely people who have volunteered some time to ask, answer a few questions for us. Before I do that, I want them all to introduce themselves and their role here in the town. I'm Ken Harper, County Judge Executive, Simpson County. I'm Nancy Neely, I'm President of the Historical Society. I'm Margaret Snyder, a member of the Historical Society. I'm Bonnie Moody, the Circuit Court Clerk and a member of the Historical Society. I'm Sarah Richardson and I'm librarian for the Historical Society. We have several reasons why you should stop in Simpson County and Franklin for tourists. We, uh, this is the garden spot of the world, we call it. Uh, we have a lot of history in this county. Uh, we have an antique car show each year in August here. It brings in uh, seven, 8,000 people. We have a garden trot it race each year in August. It brings in a lot of people in the road. It has one of the biggest often, I guess, in the state here in August of each year. So we have a lot of history, and we're not too far from Shaker Town, which is right over from us, and we have a lot of history here. Okay. Um, what is the major industry in this area? We have about 10 here. It's real good to our uh, county, and we have a lot of farming is the biggest, so, but we have a lot of factory here, around 10 of them, and our need, I'd say, right now for uh, the factories and all would be maybe a lake to have more water. We need that. Delph, so how was the county formed? Who helped form the county? Uh, well, 
it was part of Warren County to start with, and so that where there were two factions that were trying to uh, pick out the location of the county seat to be the county seat of this county, and a man by the name of Mr. Hutzbeth on the land where we're standing now for about two miles south and a mile and a half east and west, and he very badly wanted to sell the his land for the county seat, and there was another faction wanted the the county seat about two miles down the road somewhere else. So he had tried all week with his workers to find a water was the main reason for picking the location. So he dug a well, and they couldn't find water. And it was a day or two before the commissioners who came from other surrounding counties were to select one of the two uh, spots, and so. He just had his hands to go to the creek, which is about a mile and a half from here, and haul water all night and put in that, that well and filled it up, and it looked like a bubbling well the next day. And also, he threw a big barbecue for everybody, and the commissioners and all, something uh, made them favor this spot, but the, the ironical thing is the well never went dry after that, <laughs> after that beginning. And the well, the spot of the well is over on the south side of the courthouse yard there, and so we tell that story. It may not be too um, complimentary to us, but it is an interesting beginning. <laughs> and so that was the beginning uh, of the county seat in 1819. Okay. The structure itself, um, from here, is reading 1882. Um, to your knowledge, was there a courthouse before this, or is this the... Uh, the Historical Society has put this uh, book out on facts and phases, and we have another book that tells, or uh, two, that tells the beginning. Uh, Nancy, do you want to tell about the beginning of the... I'd rather not. I'm not a native. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you then. And they get the uh, side tron. That's why... They had the... The first courthouse was just a little log uh, house on the corner of this same area here while they were building the first courthouse. And it, uh, let's see, that first courthouse, I don't know whether it burned down or whether they tore it down, but then burned down. And then they built another one, and it burned in uh, about 1880, just, I, I think that's about right. And then they built this one, this present courthouse, in 1882. So we celebrated the 100th birthday of it uh, five years ago. and. Uh, and of course, uh, since they've built it, they've added a lot of remodeling to it and, and all, but they've kept the flavor of the, of the original. The, the courthouse that preceded it, though, had the entrances on the south and north side, whereas when they built this one, they put them on east and west. That's a big difference in, in that. Okay, thank you. Would you mind telling us a little bit about this book you're holding? Um, the State Historical Society uh, began a project of encouraging all the counties to record cemeteries, so this, is the, this book is the result of our cooperation with the state project. And uh, so far as we know, we have recorded every cemetery in the county and uh, have a nice record of names and dates. And uh, it's, it's been sold to nationwide, I think, to practically every state in the Union and, uh, and to all the state libraries. So our book does have good uh, coverage and is available to a lot of people. Okay, thank you. Did you have something you wanted to share with us? This book was put out by uh, the late Mrs. James Beach Sr. and uh, the past president of the Historical Society, James Henry Snyder. He did the photography work on it. And it uh, depicts uh, in picture uh, history of Franklin and the Franklin people. And it's a very good book and I think it's all sold out. Okay. What is the title? Franklin and Simpson County, Reflections of 1978, and a supplement uh, to a picture of progress to a book that uh, was written and put together before this book. And, this and our uh, bicentennial, we planted a capsule to be opened in 2076. We won't be around to see what's in it, uh, but uh, there's a little bit of all of Franklin's history in the capsule. Okay.
Thank, thank you. To say. Uh, it won't be interesting for us, but for our children's children, probably. <laughs> Taylorsville, the county seat of Spencer County. Spencer County population, 6,175. Area square miles, 192. Rank, 106. Spencer County is located in the second congressional district. Behind us we have the Spencer County Courthouse. To my right we have a lady whose name is Mary Frances Brown, who's a local historian, is currently doing research and will be compiling a book uh, in regards to the county. We've asked, we'd like to ask her a few questions about the county itself. Um, Mrs. Brown, when was the county formed? It was formed in 1824. January of 1824, out of the counties of Shelby and Nelson and Bullitt. This is a small section off of Bullitt. Okay. But the large part from Salt River uh, northward to Shelbyville was in Shelby County. The, the land south of Salt River was Nelson County, and it was divided off of those ends. Okay. Um, where, who is the county named after? Well, that's an interesting story. I had wondered that for many years in this fall. And we all knew that it was named after a man named Captain Spear Spencer, a famous Indian fighter. But that's about the, all we knew. Spencer County, 1824, named for Spear Spencer. So I wondered who was Spear Spencer? Why was he chosen? And he, I knew he was an Indian fighter. And... Uh, he came into this area through Nelson County, and then he moved further north over into the Shelby County area, and he was in, enlisted in the Cornstalk Militia, what was the Kentucky State Militia, in the years in, during the 1790s in Shelby County. And finally he moved on to uh, Cordon, Indiana, and became quite a good friend of William Henry Harrison, who was also an Indian fighter and um, later President of the United States. And he was killed in Indian battle at Tippecanoe. He is buried on the ground where he fell. There's a magnificent marker at the where the battle was fought, and then the seven officers who were killed there each had tombstones and the location on which they fell. It's the most inspirational and beautiful. I saw it in the fall of the year about the time the battle was fought. Just, uh, the battle was the 11th of November, and I saw it the last week in October, so the coloring of the leaves would have been similar, and it just a real inspiring place, and the more I hear about Spear Spencer, the prouder I am of him, but he was the man who was chosen. And you see, he was a contemporary of the people who were in uh, the legislature at that time, and I'm sure many of them knew him, and is the reason his name would come up. That's, uh, that's the way I see him, and I'm, I'm proud of him from what I've learned of him. Okay, thank you. Um, what can you tell us about the, the age of the courthouse, and, and did other courthouses stand here prior to it? Pardon me, there have been four courthouses, but um, there was one in this area right in here, the very first one. And then there, there was another one that I have never been able to find a deed on, but it was in the square. But that one burned, and then the, the third one was built over here on this site. And, um, then it burned in 1913, and this one was completed in 1914. I'd, I have to say that in this research that I have grown to respect the pioneer woman above practically any women in history, those who came westward. They came for various reasons. Many of their husbands were Revolutionary War men with grants. And many of them were veterans of the French and Indian War. And those people moved in here. And uh, for many years, we have been under the impression that everybody came over the Cumberland Gap. But that is a false conception. People from, many people from Western Virginia did, but more came down the river, the Ohio River, to the falls. 
And there, because of the falls, they had to be piloted around that. And there were, there were ever pilots who did that. They came off, these men came south on flatboats. And of course, the, the danger that they were exposed to either on foot or on the river from Indians was constant. And we had um, a, a tragic massacre over on Cox's Creek, which is so close to Spencer County. It's, and so many of those people who were, um, well, it was called Kinslow Station, but it was, I meant it was in the Cox's Creek neighborhood. And there was a fort at Cox's Creek, and so many of those people I found in the deeds have settled this county and Shelby County. Bowling Green, the county seat of Warren County. Warren County population, 82,033. Area square miles, 547. Rank, number 10. Warren County is located in the 2nd Congressional District. Sheriff Jerry Peanut Gaines, Warren County. I'm Yvonne Guy, Warren County Clerk. Bobby L. Bunch, Jailer Bowling Green, Warren County. Bill Carter, Property Value Waste Minister. Okay. I could just tell you how far our records go back. Our records go back to 1797, and uh, we have been reorganizing the county clerk's office, and we're real proud to have had some mi re microfilming done of the older records and uh, getting everything more up-to-date and uh, improvements made. You know, uh, talking about historically, right over in front of the city hall, John F. Candy made a speech when he was campaigning. Uh, what, two years ago, Ronald Reagan was here at Beach Bend Park, so we've had two presidents visit Bowling Green we know of, you know, in, in my lifetime. And President Roosevelt visited. And Roosevelt, yeah, visited on the train, didn't he? Uh -huh. Right. So they do stop and see us every now and then. Good. You had mentioned earlier um, a celebrity who is originally from this area who's in acting now, and I don't... Oh, that's uh, Annie Potts. You know, she's a... Uh, She's from Bowling Green, you know, played in Corvette Summer and all that. She's in California now, starring in some other movie, I forget one. But she's from Bowling Green. Okay. Why you decided to become a public servant? What perhaps initiated uh, the direction you've all taken into becoming public servants for the county of Warren? Well, I've, I've always enjoyed politics all my life. My father fooled with them, and I decided to fool with them, you know. I run for magistrate and lost by just a few votes, and then I run and got elected magistrate, and then I went on there to sheriff, and uh, I just enjoy serving the people of Warren County, you know, and uh, when you get into politics, it kind of gets in your blood, and I guess it's in my blood, you know, so I really enjoy it. Okay, thank you. Well, as Sheriff Gaines said, mentioned about his father, my father was very interested in politics, and I watched it as I was growing up, and uh, I worked as deputy clerk in the county clerk's office for over 30 years for only two county clerks, and uh, I became clerk in 1986 after the, uh, Mr. Moorhead retired, and he had dece was deceased at that time. My dad was a master in our district two terms, which I used to ride with him on election time when we'd go talk to the voters. And being jailer, I've been a jailer for six years, and you can help so many people in your county. I go to the judges and talk to them for them. Some people has got nobody but me to help them, and which I try to help them. Like the rest of them, my dad was in politics, uh, three terms a city councilman here in Bowling Green, and that's when I became interested helping him in his races. But the reason I myself am in politics is I like to see everybody get the same opportunities for help. Uh, and, and I want to see that no matter what the person's station in life is, he's treated the same, uh, whether he's worth a million dollars or whether he has no money whatsoever. So that's why I am in politics, to see that everybody gets a fair shake. Okay, thank you. Um, we understand that there is a local gentleman who is your congressman. Perhaps you could, all of you or one of you, give us some information on, on who he is, as he is, like you all are, serving as public servants. Do you of course, actually talking about Congressman Natcher, whose office is across the street, and he's been there, what, you on 36, 38 years? Or? It's been a long time. It's been a long time. I and remember when he ran for county attorney. Right. She's a whole lot older than us. We don't mean that. <laughs> but, but he's old and he's always there to help you. And when he comes in, we go see him, you know. And we're real proud of Congressman Natcher. And anytime you go to Washington, he makes you feel like a king, you know. And Bobby and him might want to say something about him. And, yeah. 
Congressman Natcher, I'd be afraid to say how long he's been there, but he's never missed a meeting since he's been there. And Warren County is awful proud of William Natcher. If I could say right now, when I'm finished with politics, I could have the same record as Bill Natcher, I'd be more than satisfied. He's been great. Great. Thank you. Thank you all. <laughs> All right, I'm Carol Crow Carrico, and I am a professor of history in the history department here at Western Kentucky University. So I, I work up on the hill, as the local people say. Okay. Um, as we're going around the state, we're trying to collect information on each county, historically speaking, and they, of course, recommended you to be the one. Um, so what we were trying to find out was to determine when the county was formed, um, the history of the courthouse structure itself, anything that might come to mind that would be advantageous to high school kids. All right, thank you. This county was formed in uh, February of 1796. It's the 24th Kentucky County, I do believe. It was named for a General Warren, uh, who was a Civil War general. Bowling Green uh, was the first town. and I Bowling Green became the county seat about 1798. The town itself was named for Bowling Green, Virginia, or perhaps Bowling Green, New York. It's rather doubtful that anyone actually bowled upon our green. They were too busy trying to stay alive. <laughs> we are now standing in the third courthouse that has graced our county. Our first courthouse was a log structure in the town square. It soon became too small. It was only 24 by 24. Uh, and it was raised in a second courthouse, a brick structure, Georgian in architecture, was built. Probably moved into in the second decade of the 19th century, and it remained the courthouse until 1867 when this structure was opened. This st structure served as the Warren County Courthouse from approximately 1867 down until last year, 1986. It is considered one of the finest examples of Greek Revival public buildings in Kentucky, and we are rightly proud of it. Interestingly also, this is one of several, I suppose, courthouses in the state of Kentucky that was not burned by John Hunt Morgan, and it has not been, it has not burned. So there are many local records still in this courthouse. Such things as property conveyances going back to probably as early as 1797 and having the first reference to Mammoth Cave, wills and inventory you can tell so much about a people by what is inventoried. In fact, we were looking just a few minutes earlier that someone finally in 1812 had a looking glass that was worth about 50 cents when the estate was inventoried. There are school records to be found here, very interesting records. There are references to the state insane asylum, and there are other things that are equally important to students and uh, local historians. Although a number of important people have come from Warren County, perhaps the most famous political figure of the 19th century was Joseph Underwood. He was a congressman and senator. Unfortunately, he was in the Senate at the same time as Henry Clay, so we don't know that, hear that much about his activities. He was a, a lawyer here in town as well, and he took part in the opening of this courthouse in 1867, since he was one of the few people left who had practiced in the old courthouse as well. Western Kentucky University is deeply wedded to the community. I'm not sure exactly how many people are employed at Western. I would say faculty and staff probably close to a thousand, uh, plus the 13,000 students who are enrolled in the for classes on campus, I think we do have quite an impact on the community. One of the best known local residents these days is undoubtedly Congressman Bill Natcher. He has been a congressman since the 
late 1950s, I believe, or early 1960s, and we are very proud of the fact that uh, he has never missed a roll call, and interestingly enough, he always seems to be able to operate within his budget and returns part of it each year to the national government. Uh, Congressman Natcher is in town quite often, and we are very pleased to have his daughter coming two weeks from now to take part in a Southern Women Writers Workshop. Springfield, the county seat of Washington County. Washington County population, 10,253. Area square miles, 301. Rank, 65th. Washington County is located in the 2nd Congressional District. Springfield, Kentucky, which is located in Washington County, it is the county seat and behind us we have the Washington County Courthouse. To my left we have the circuit clerk. I'm going to ask her to introduce herself. Wilma Grigsby, circuit clerk. Okay. Wilma, what can you tell us about the county as far as industry goes? The major thing in Washington County is the farming. We have several factories here, but the main thing is farming. Um, we asked Bubba Robertson, who's the court clerk, some information about the history of the county. When did you say this, the, this courthouse was built? It was erected in 1812. Okay. And um, Bubba told us that there were two courthouses prior to this, which is almost hard to believe, but this you know, this in itself is an old courthouse. He also mentioned that the county was formed. In 1792, Nelson, Washington, and Marion were all one county. Okay. Wilma, well, what is the population in the county? Uh, the last census was 10,700. Following the admission of Kentucky to the Union on June the 1st, 1792, the first act adopted by the new state was one presented by General Matthew Walton representative from Nelson County, intimate of Governor Isaac Shelby and largest landowner in Kentucky prior to 1800. The bill was to create and name a new county for General George Washington. This was accomplished in 1792, making Washington County the tenth in line of formation, taking it from Nelson County. At the time, there was no town of Springfield, only a few small dwellings clustered around the Little Roads Run Presbyterian Church. Sometime before September 1792, the county's first seven justices of peace met. They met at the Colonel Hardin's home and elected to hold the first court in the home of Francis Simbrel. By February 1793, the commissioners had fixed upon the particular spot which to erect the courthouse and contracted with Hugh McElroy. Hugh McElroy, of course, built that first courthouse. 1793, a bill was passed establishing the town of Springfield on 50 acres of land which belonged to Matthew Walton. The log courthouse burned after only 11 months of use, and again court business had to be conducted in various homes and meeting houses in the town and county. The second courthouse was erected by John Dowdle. It was brick of the pioneer top with gabled roof. It cost 404 pounds, 20 shillings, and was occupied in July 1797. This building burned in the spring of 1814. The little one-room brick clerk's office, built in 1802, was unattached and behind the courthouse. Thus, the irreplaceable documents stored there were spared. Among these were the famed Lincoln-Hanks marriage documents. On May the 10th, 1814, the commissioners met on the grounds where the courthouse formerly stood and let to the lowest bidder, Thomas H. Letcher, a contract for building a new brick courthouse to cost $2,500. The courthouse, which Thomas H. Letcher designed and built for Washington County, combined dignity with simplicity. Its two-story Georgian facade was five bayed across the front and capped with a hip roof. In 1918, the court decided it would be advisable to make some improvements in the courthouse by erecting suitable colonial porches on the front and side by replacing the old pane windows with new ones. Frank Burr, who was an architect, advised the court that the proposed plan was impractical and a portico of lower height in the Doric style would be better harmonized with the buildings. This was accepted and a contract was let to construct the present portico. During the time of this renovation, the iron fence on the west side of the courtyard and enclosing the front yard was removed and ordered to be sold. In April 1966, a sesquicentennial 
was held commemorating this 150 year old building being the oldest courthouse in Kentucky still being used as a seat of justice. I would like to thank the many people who helped make these historic tapes possible. Historians, elected officials, businesses, store cable with their equipment, the many other studios across the state, the local newspapers, daily newspapers that helped us in this effort. In particular, Miss June Guyman, who traveled some 42,000 miles across the Commonwealth of Kentucky with me, filming these historic tapes. Now we'd like for you to enjoy the history of Kentucky, county by county, as we enjoyed making the history come true for you. Oh, Kentucky, Kentucky County, a place to work and play. Oh, Kentucky, Kentucky County, a place I want to stay. Its far north gate and southern trails came Walker Boone and Kenton too. Kentucky, she is calling a place of history. Oh, Kentucky, Kentucky County, a place to work and play. Oh, Kentucky, Kentucky County, a place I want to stay.
Bardstown, the county seat of Nelson County. Nelson County population, 29,348. Area square miles, 424. Rank, 27th. Nelson County is located in the 2nd Congressional District. To my right, we have a local historian, Dixie Hibbs, who has been graciously volunteered to answer a few questions for us. Dixie, what can you tell us about the formation of the county? All right, Nelson County was formed out of Jefferson in 1784, actually began the 1st of 1785. Uh, it was named after Thomas Nelson, Governor of Virginia. Of course, we were still Virginia at that time. We would not be Kentucky till 1792, but after 92, we would have over 16 counties to be formed out of the original Nelson. Nelson was everything south of the Salt River of uh, Jefferson County. Jefferson was one of the three formed in 1780. We are settled mostly with people from Northern Virginia, Pennsylvania, uh, Maryland. They have, most of them came down the river on flatboat. They are, uh, a lot of them have been here ever since. Uh, we don't move around too much. We let the world come to visit us instead of us moving on. Okay. What well, can you tell us about this courthouse? It's a gorgeous structure. Well, this courthouse was the result of a contest that was uh, run in 1891. The uh, city, the county um, commissioners decided they wanted to build a new courthouse. So they ran an ad in the Courier Journal. Architects submitted plans and they chose this one. This was built uh, by Mr. Lyons, a contractor out of Louisville. He was directed to tear the old courthouse down, which was stone, and went back to 1800, and to use all the stone in the courthouse in building this one. Well, you don't see much stone on this courthouse. It's all underground. So you go down in the basement and you can see some of the original 1800 stones. Uh, it cost about $29,000. And I think it's real interesting. In 1982, uh, we built a brick sidewalk around it that cost $28,000. Uh, courthouse now only houses the district court, the circuit clerk, uh, the uh, county judge, the sheriff's department. Our county clerk and some of the other county offices are in a courthouse annex because we outgrew that site. As big as it looked in 1892, it's certainly wasn't big enough in uh, 1982. For some people who may not know, can you give us uh, a little background on some historical figures from your area? Okay. Well, let's talk about Bardstown in general. Bardstown, county seat of Nelson County, was settled in 1780 when we were still part of Jefferson County. Uh, it's named for the Bard family. Uh, William Bard was an agent of his brother here in Kentucky, and he uh, stood on the banks of the Falls of the Ohio and welcomed everybody coming down the river saying, I've got a deal you can't turn down, and I'll let you use this land free until the war's over, and then you pay me rent every month. So uh, this didn't exactly happen. They came and cleared the land, built their houses, and then they used it. Uh, Bard kind of wandered off, and uh, then when he came back, the town was fairly well developed and they had the town trustees had been selling lots so he kind of stepped back and watched it grow. Uh, we have federal and Georgian architecture here. We have a lot of houses still from the late 1790s, early 1800 period. We have 299 buildings on the National Register of Historic Places here. We, uh, tourism is our number one industry which is not to say that we don't have other industries we're just as proud of, but tourism is one that we uh, are cultivating and are very pleased with. We have my old Kentucky home, which the song that Stephen Foster wrote, which is now our state song. This was the inspiration for that. Uh, it is a federal mansion sitting on the hill outside of Bardstown Plantation. Uh, John Rowan, the owner, builder, was a lawyer and politician, so we've always been connected with Kentucky politics. The um, we have other things here. The First Cathedral, West the Allegheny, St. Joseph Cathedral. It's a Catholic cathedral built by Benedict Joseph Flaget, the first bishop. Uh, this was constructed in 1816. Uh, we have old buildings that people like to visit that now house restaurants and shops and things of this sort, as well as uh, uh, just the atmosphere. We have a very historic town that people like to walk around the streets. We were chosen as one of, of the uh, ten nicest places to visit and to live, actually, in the United States by U.S. News and World Report in 1983. So we looked at, kind of took a second look at ourselves and said, yes, they're right. This is a very nice place to live. And we have good schools. Um, I would say good um, weather, but today isn't a good day to say good weather. The sun shines bright most of the time unless it rains, and then it's uh, liquid sunshine is what we have here in Bardstown today. Um, the other thing about Bardstown I always like to tell, it's a very cooperative community that has a lot of pride in itself, takes care of itself. Uh, we are always looking down the future. We say we, we are a progressive community that looks forward in progress but looks back in preservation. So we believe in preserving our past while working toward our future. Great. Thank you.